and cute. How about you? Where are you, Spock? Hi, Spock. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hi, guys. This week's video is going to be about reading material. And I realize that a lot of you are reading things online. Some of you are purchasing magazines. Some of you are buying books. Some of you are just asking questions on Facebook or similar uh, social media trying to get answers to the hobby. And I was thinking, well, <laughs> let me roll back a little bit here. I myself am online answering questions all the time. And I'm sure at some point you've probably wondered, well, what do I read? Well, to be honest, uh, I don't have a lot of time to read. And it's very rare I get to pick up a book and really enjoy it. But I am a subscriber to Coral Magazine. And I got to say right out of the gate, I am not being paid for this. I, they are not a sponsor or anything like that. Coral Magazine is an excellent publication that teaches you tons. It's really good for the hobbyist. It's probably, I'm going to risk it and say, one of the best publications you can get in the U.S. when it comes to uh, information about the hobby. So, of course, there's advertising of all the equipment you're used to using. And in this specific, you know, each issue is to a certain topic. This one in particular was about hitchhikers. And matter of fact, this uh, issue was the one I had an article come out in called Don't Fear the Hitchhiker, because I actually like all the critters in my tank. When I look around and I see something pop out of the rockwork for the first time, that's exciting. And a lot of people these days are setting up tanks with dry sand, dry rock. They add their salt water and they put in a fish, they put in a hermit crab, and they get upset if there's a sponge or a feather duster or anything appears. And I actually like all those free little invertebrate hitchhikers. So my article on page 62 was entitled, Don't Fear the Hitchhiker, with this giant picture of a very, very tiny bald anemone, which there's a whole bunch in this tank right behind me, and there's some right over here in the rock work. They're about this big, really small. And that's just one example of one. I mean, I talk about several in my article. This was the uh, November, December issue of Coral. Then, so I read, you know, of course, I'm in the magazine, so I read it. <laughs> and then, you know, January 1st was coming around, and I thought to myself, you know, everyone does these New Year's resolutions, and typically they set a resolution that they're not going to keep. You know, they say, oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, or I'm going to exercise daily, or I'm going to, you name it. You know, I'm sure you came up with a few yourself. Well, this year I said, I'm going to read every issue of Coral Magazine from cover to cover. And, uh... Am I blushing yet? I'm trying. The year's not over. I still have time. <laughs> Coral Magazine comes out every two months, so you do have enough time to read through it and, and not feel like you're racing to the end. Uh, I'm not exactly challenging you to my resolution, but I did think it was an important goal for me. Now, why am I telling you to read this? Well, if you're trying to figure out how I know so much stuff about the hobby, here's your clue. I have <laughs> a cliff note right here, a cheat sheet. Coral Magazine, this one, for example, talks about the yellow tangs that were raised in captivity in Hawaii. But it was about more than just that. There was a follow-up article called Mellow with Yellow, talking about the yellow tangs of Hawaii. And one of the things that I did not know and was really surprised to hear is that they typically live to be 41 years old. 41! Now, if I hadn't read this magazine, I wouldn't know that. Could I look it up on some website? Possibly. Would I find it listed under the Latin name? Maybe. But, you know, this magazine keeps you up to date on the latest information, and it's very easy to subscribe. One year is $37, two is $67, and three is $90. I paid $90. I just wanted to have the subscription and not have to think about it again. So every two months, I get a magazine for three years. $90 bucks is one nice frag for you guys. For me, that's about five, because <laughs> I don't buy the nice frags. I just want some corals in my tank. Another great issue that I finished reading was about uh, social fishes, the fish that swim in groups, and it made a whole bunch of suggestions of different fish that you could put into your tank that stay in groups or clusters and shoal. Uh, it's very rare to see schooling in a reef tank, because schooling is when all the fish stay equidistant from each other and move as a group. And you see that in the ocean, and it's awesome. In our tanks, it's shoaling. They'll be at different points, and they're staying in a group. Like, for example, the, the blue-green chromis, they'll stay in a group. 
the clownfish, that's not really shoaling, but the clownfish stay in groups. And uh, you, I'm trying to think of other fish that pair up in group. Oh, the pajama cardinals could stay in a group and they, they stay near each other, that's shoaling. Schooling, of course, the difference is that they are swimming exactly apart from each other, each one, and they stay that distance. And the reaction to the flow across their nervous system, across their spine, will trigger the guy next to him of what to do. It's kind of a flight or, fight or flight act. So shoaling fishes was very interesting. And then, of course, Finding Dory came out. And this is the issue I'm still working on. This is the May-June issue. And you see, I still have a bookmark in here. So I'm a little bit behind because this is August. And in the meantime, here's August, which I haven't even opened yet. And then today, the newest one came out. So I'm getting behind, but I got to finish this before the end of the year. Are you a subscriber to Coral Magazine? If you are, why don't you put in the comments below how much you love it? I would really like to encourage you guys to subscribe to Coral Magazine. And I'm doing that completely from my heart to you guys. It has nothing to do with the publication. Matter of fact, at one point I said, hey, you know, I think I'm going to talk about this on my YouTube channel. What do you guys think? And they thought, oh, that's great. And I said, can I get some kind of a discount code to uh, give to my you know, viewers? And they said, we don't do discount codes. They're, we just don't do it. And I'm, I get it. These are very expensive publications to print and to ship to your door. So they don't do discounts. But I will put a link in the description of the video that will take you straight to where you can subscribe. And I hope that you do subscribe. And I hope that you find something really cool in there. And maybe you'll tell me in the comments, you know, I read about this, or I really enjoyed this article, or Mark, did you read this yet? Or I have a question. By the way, another interesting little tidbit that I did not know was in here for a while was a, what do they call it? The word in my mind is compendium. The Coral Lexicon, it's right here. And in every issue, there's a lexicon, and it helps explain some of the words that you may not recognize um, when you're reading the article. So it's not difficult reading to where it's over your head, but there might be some words. Parthenogenesis, plankton, I knew plankton, thank God. Uh, Pluston, postflexion, and preflexion larva. So if you were trying to understand what some of these words are, they're explained in here to give you a clue. <laughs> That's so embarrassing that I cannot see with my great glasses anymore. I gotta get a new set. Next week is MACNA. I'm going to leave on Wednesday and I'm gonna be there through the following Monday. I'm going to try to get another video out next week while I'm in California. And if I can share something from MACNA through Facebook Live or maybe YouTube Live, I'll try. I don't know what the reception is gonna be like, but if you're still on the fence, if you're a California person, and you're thinking, oh, should I go? Yes, you should go. You know how long people have been saying, please bring Macna to California? <laughs> I'd say at least 10 years, if not longer. It's finally in your backyard in San Diego, September 9 through 11. So go. There's day passes. Uh, I know that they're even accepting volunteers right now that can work part of the day and get in for free. So there is an opportunity to do that as well. And if you don't go, you're going to regret it. When we did Macna here in 2012, I um, told the club members forever and ever, you got to go, you got to go. Well, one person came on Sunday, and when they showed up, they said, I had no idea how big this was. If I had known, I would have come Friday and Saturday, which killed me because I spent three years with a couple of other people nonstop working every single day to prepare that event so that they could enjoy the whole thing. And for them to tell me, oh, I wish I'd known when we spent so much time telling them how much they need to go, you just got to go. Just go. Trust me. Go. And you'll not regret it. You'll love it. I mean, how can you not love an event that's all about corals, fish, equipment, and knowledgeable people? That's what it's all about. Thanks so much for watching, and there will be a new video out next week. I will, I'm not sure what day I'm going to sneak it out, but I'll do my best to get it out before I am at MACNA itself on Friday morning. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bonus clip after the credits. So last night I saw something cute happen and I grabbed the camera and I filmed it for you and I thought that you might get a kick out of it. I didn't use the microphone so it's a little bit noisier, but here you go. Okay, if you watch really closely, that wrasse seems to be snuggling up in the hammer coral. Nah, I tried not to distract him when I was getting the camera. Anyway, he's just cruising around on top of the hammers like the skunk clowns are. And 
Like he's acting like it's a bed. It's hilarious. Here he comes. Right behind the yellow tang. Look at that. It's the nuttiest thing ever, right? I mean, you know, rats asleep in the sand. That's a melanurus rat, and it's dark. This is about 30 minutes before I feed the tank. And he's just resting. <laughs> Funniest thing ever. At least I was able to film it. <laughs>